In the past, Gamma K, formerly known as Vomir, has impressed me with their K66 and K87 keyboards. Mainly the K87, because that one's hot swappable. I have it back here, right there. I'm bad with directions in this reflection thing. It's hot swappable. I currently have some tangerine switches and some custom keycaps on there, and it's one of my favorite boards to use simply for that reason that I was able to customize it. Well, Gamma K is back, stepping away a little bit from the acrylic full RGB keyboards, moving into very familiar territory for this channel. This is the MK61 from Gamma K. It is a 60% gaming keyboard with RGB lighting and it is hot swappable with Gateron optical switches. If this is sounding familiar at all with this channel, you're right. It is another Gateron Optical Switch Hot Swap keyboard, but I do want to talk about this one a little bit. First of all, thank you to Banggood for sending this keyboard out for review. If you do want to check it out in any other similar products, I will have links in the description. They are currently having their March shopping festival from March 10th to the 27th, so check it out if you want to in the description. Now, when I first got this keyboard, I pulled it out of the box and I thought, this is just the GK61 with putting keycaps. And essentially it is. But there is a bit more to it than that and some reasons why I would actually pick this keyboard over the GK61 so stay tuned to find out why I like it more. I kind of really should try not to compare every optical mechanical switch keyboard that I get to the GK61 but they're just always so similar in a lot of ways. Same shaped case, very similar if not the same PCB. A lot of times they really are just the same keyboard but with some minor differences. And while that is the case here I do think the MK61 is a little more exciting and deserves a little bit more attention than you might be giving it if you're looking at the GK61. First of all and most obvious are aesthetics. Now there are new versions of the GK61 that have been released even on banggood.com since I made my GK61 review. I don't know a whole lot about them, I've seen them around, I've heard about them in my comments, but this is comparing strictly to the glossy black GK61 that I reviewed last year. This keyboard is available in black or white, I really like how the white one looks, I think it looks really clean, especially with the pudding keycaps. Like I've mentioned in previous videos, I'm not a huge fan of pudding keycaps, but I will say that they do look really nice in white, it's a nice look. I gotta hand it to them for that. The font on the keycaps is not ugly, it's not super gamery. It's pretty simple, they do kind of have some of the letters broken up like they have to for stability, like on the O key and the D key for example. I do like that these secondary legends are in a lighter grey color. I hate secondary legends sometimes because they're just so obtrusive and so ugly. If you get like a white keycap and you just have a dark print of a secondary legend on there, I think that kind of takes away from the overall physical appearance of the keyboard. But with this lighter color on the white, I think it makes it so that you know what those keys are going to do without making it look nasty on your desk. I think they did a nice choice with that design. It has the same case as a lot of the other optical mechanical keyboards I've covered. That same angle that elevates the case. No pop out feet on the bottom but four rubber feet to keep it from scratching or sliding around on your desk. USB-C port on the back and Gamma K's new logo on the front which I haven't seen on any of their keyboards because the other two Gamma K keyboards I received previously were Womier branded before they changed their name. I think the logo looks nice and it's not too obtrusive on the front corner there. As for the switches, again they are hot swappable Gateron optical switches. I just covered these kind of switches on my last keyboard video so I'm not going to go into detail here. Basically to sum up, you can take these switches out to put in other Gateron optical switches only, not any other type of switch. The PCB can only work with those because it doesn't have the holes for 3 or 5 pin switches. Now while you do have your usual choice of red, blue, or brown switches, this MK61 also offers Gateron optical green switches and and Gateron optical yellow switches. Those yellows are really popular if you guys have seen my DK61 videos. I have two of them, both of them kind of emphasizing a little bit about the yellow switches. Those same exact Gateron optical yellow switches are on this board and I think they feel really nice. They're still a little too light for me when it comes to typing. There's times where I just kind of have my fat sausages resting on the keyboard while I'm kind of thinking of what I want to type next and the next thing I realize I'm just holding the S key down and seeing it go across the screen. For gaming though, they're going to be right on the mark if you're looking for something fast, some of the fastest switches. I did do a sort of comparison between these and the Gateron Optical Silvers in a video which I'll link here and they did come out on top as just incrementally faster. And because I'm gonna get the question again, which switch did you get? It's all preference. If you're looking for gaming stuff, just go with one of the linear switches, so either yellow or red in this case. It's not gonna make a huge difference, it's not gonna make you a champion at Fortnite. Just pick one. <laughs>
The aesthetics and the wider range of Switch options are why I would choose this over the GK61 that I reviewed in the past, but I will say that one of the biggest reasons is the stabilizers. If you guys might have noticed in that sound test, maybe it's hard to tell just from hearing it, but the stabilizers actually sound really nice on this keyboard compared to any other Gateron Optical Switch keyboard that I've reviewed. GK61, SK61, DK61, they're all okay, but they tend to have really rattly space bars and at least some fairly rattly stabilizers all around. Those could be modded a little bit more easily with these boards because they are hot swappable, but sometimes you just don't want to mod anything or you don't have the means to. You want something that's going to work really well out of the box. For only $52.99, these are probably some of the better stabilizers I've heard out of the box compared to even some of the more expensive keyboards out there. Where the MK61 disappoints is the software. I'm not even going to go into the software because I kind of can't. I downloaded the software, played around with it for a little bit, and it's kind of dumb. I don't, I don't understand. A lot of the other keyboards, the GK61, SK61, and so on, use the same exact software. You could just download it for one of those boards and use it for all of them, pretty much. It could be a little complex to wrap your head around, but at least you can kind of go in there and play around with presets. You can change the lighting on there, you can change the hotkeys, but Gamma K went their own way and decided to make their own software for this, and I don't think they did that great a job, I'm sorry. It at least looks kind of nice at first, but then once you click on the keyboard to go into the options, it's kind of ugly and it just doesn't really work. It's super confusing. You click on a key and then this pops up and I'm like, what, what does that mean? So I clicked on the plus sign and I can see where you can reprogram the keys and I'm like, okay, it's kind of similar to the GK61 software, but it's different, but I could not see anywhere in there to change the lighting at all. Unless I'm wrong just from looking around and digging around in there for a bit, I didn't see anything that you can do to change the lighting. It kind of seems like the lighting presets on the board that come out of the box are basically what you get. That's not terrible, at least for me personally. I like the lighting presets on the board. There's a lot of reactive presets, which is kind of annoying. It's not really what I'm into, but they are at least better than what you get out of the box with other similar boards that I've used in the past. They all kind of had the same presets and they're all kind of just boring or just not a great color option. I think the color options that come out of the box for the lighting on this board are better, but it just seems disappointing that at least for right now, until maybe Gamma K improves the software, I don't think you can, you can change the lighting. That's kind of weird. Now, it could be very wrong. That is entirely possible. If I am wrong, please let people know in the comments so that they can work it out and, and just do better at it. Um, but, you know, I have a lot of keyboard reviews to get through, and I personally don't care all that much about going into the lighting. If it's, if it's not painfully obvious in the software, the software is bad. But don't let that deter you from buying the board. I think the board itself is one that I personally would choose over something like the GK61 or maybe even the SK61. SK61 would take it for me personally as far as aesthetics, but it also has some of the worst stabilizers out of all of these similar boards. For the stabilizers alone, plus the aesthetics, uh, it's the stabilizers is like 80% of why I would choose this board over any other similar boards. And then the aesthetics with the pudding keycaps and the lighting just looks really nice. And uh, I think I think it's worth looking into. And that's it for me. I do, Hopefully this was a short video. Uh, it seems to be a shorter recording time for me than usual. I'm trying to keep it short on this one just because it's, it is so similar to so many other boards I reviewed with not a lot different to it. So I just wanted to go over the advantages. And I hope you guys check it out. If you do want to check it out, again, links are in the description. They are affiliate links. So if you purchase anything from those links, Portly is going to get a little something back to help fund the channel and keep it going, keep it growing, just like Portly. <laughs> Speaking of keeping going and keeping growing, if you like this video, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends, leave a like, leave a comment. If you hated it, give it a dislike. Thank you guys all the same. I appreciate you. I gotta go. My throat's getting dry. It's only been 20 minutes of recording. <sighs> Awkward outro. I don't know what to say. <laughs> if you like this video, check out this one here. And this one here is an old portly video, just for old time's sake.